anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism, how steroids cause low T. This is the essence for my movement, the essence of my work. Anabolic steroids, anabolic androgenic steroids have incredible effects from head to toe. For the 1930s and 1940s when anabolic steroids started to be produced and manufactured, there was a lot of research conducted on understanding how we could limit the androgenicity, the male secondary sex characteristics aspects of these steroids, not to mention on the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis for men. A lot of research back then. Everyone's going to agree that every 100% pro bodybuilder, a man that's used steroids for years and years and years, is going to have to be on testosterone for life. He is going to have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. The data is definitely in on this. Post cycle therapy is a bro science term. It's not a medical terminology, unfortunately. Most physicians have no idea what PCT actually is. And there's no long term data on PCT and if it works. And for this, it's well characterized and known that everyone blasts and cruises because they don't feel well when they come off the steroids and they just stay on testosterone, they cruise on testosterone, blast up on steroid doses for whatever they're doing, come back down, cruise on TRT. This is the truth. What is anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism? It's well known that any and all steroids in the world testosterone derived, DHT derived, the 19 nor derived type of steroids. There is a very complex interplay of exogenous super physiologic androgen stimulation on the central nervous system, the limbic system. From the literature, chronically consumed high doses of anabolic androgenic steroids are postulated to stimulate brain reward systems in humans and to result in neuroabduction in other brain systems that manifest as withdrawal symptoms when the anabolic steroids are removed. This is from Wood and other aspects and writings from Wood, essentially 2004. And it is also postulated that long-term use of anabolic androgenic steroids causes a permanent damage in the CNS areas and this contributes to severe withdrawal symptoms and poor libido, most specifically, an absence of sex thoughts completely when the anabolic steroids are stopped. Kaniyama et al., 2015. That's just one of the many, many, many points. And this year, 2020, more data coming out from other experts in the world. What's happening? With the stimulation and the shutdown of an acutely hypothalamus pituitary region, there are no gonadotropins, LH and FSH, produced from the pituitary, anterior pituitary. With this, what ensues on steroids is testicular atrophy. This is when the hypothalamus pituitary is disconnected, totally disconnected, when you're on steroids, when a man's on steroids. If it's limited, if it's short term, on the first cycle, for an example, or limited when a man is very young, when the steroids are removed, there's a reconnection of the hypothalamus pituitary back to the gonads. And at that point, if it's limited and there's no damage, there's a reconnection. Men will feel it, but they feel okay in the first cycle or two, or as things move on, it's so man per man, and that's what is causing the issue. What is the point? Where is that point? What's that line in the sand, as I say to every man that I counsel and I discuss and comes to me, when the hypothalamus pituitary gonad axis becomes permanently disconnected? This is the issue. There's no data. There's no definitive answer. Everything is man per man. It's dose dependent, steroid dependent, man dependent. So many variables, cross this line, do more steroids, SARMs, do more cycles, come off, 
regardless of PCT, this is what happens. This is why and how anabolic steroid use is such an insidious process. It starts with every man from just one cycle, or maybe even testosterone boosters, or now SARMs, and he crosses and he continues, and he ends up staying on testosterone longer and longer to understand that he's never going to come off testosterone. What's the actual mechanism in the brain, in the body? We understand that the underlying mechanism of action is mainly a secondary form of hypogonadism. What that is, testicles are primary, and up in the brain, CNS is a secondary process. Something happens in the central nervous system, in that deep limbic region. Something happens with the changes in the brain. There are other brain tracts, other neurotransmitters, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin. We know this, and we know in the post-period, that's why you see such a depression, potentially, and of course, the poor sex. We understand this because when LH analogs, like human corneac and atropin, are utilized, the testicles respond. That's why we know it's not a primary or mainly a primary process. Secondary process is failing up top in the central nervous system. So after when the steroids are stopped and HCG is utilized, came out in PCT almost 20 years ago, you stimulate the Leydig serotoli cells and you get action. If they were numb and permanently damaged, they wouldn't respond. But we do see different levels of numbness and insensitivity. A man that's naive to steroids, taking small doses of ACG, will have a huge effect. I see it every day. Men that are shut down and significantly shut down from a lot of steroids for many, many years, you need to use more HCG, not only for fertility, but to bring up his natural testosterone levels endogenously from his testicles. Now, when the HCG is stopped, there's no fix. And so many people ask me, is it a reset button? Do you do HCG and you stimulate the testicles? You're really bypassing the brain at that time. And does it come back? Just give me some HCG in this post period. Does it come back? It doesn't come back. Over time, with the HCG, very short half-life, weans off over the week or two, or certainly more in some men, you go back to your baseline. That's your baseline. I've seen low testosterone, total testosterones, under 10 nanograms per deciliter. Free testosterones can be variable. Those can be very low too, and mostly they are. It's also relative to low normal testosterone, maybe three or 400, with symptoms, symptomology, the definition and the diagnosis here is classic, clinical, integrated with labs, clinical diagnosis. It's so important. Men have poor libidos. <clears throat> they have no libido at all. Depression, even suicide. They have inabilities for concentration and focus. And they feel poorly. Malaise and fatigue. I've seen men at six months off have these symptoms and not come back. I've seen it at 12 months. I've seen it 18 months. I've seen it greater than two years. At that point, Obviously, it's permanent. It's a normal level of LH and FSH that come back, and it just set where they have this baseline now, new reestablished T or low T level, and it's called a normal hypogonadotropic hypogonadisms. That specifically, scientifically, is characterizing the function of the gonadotropins being normal because they're normal on paper and the gonadotropins stimulating an insensitive gonad being hypogonadotropic. Theoretically, when testosterone is low, gonadotropin should be high. That's a primary process. It's failed. That's why we know it's up in the central nervous system. We need to do more. More work on this, more research is underway. And with this, and I close, this is why I warn men, young men, or any man, 30s, 40s, 50s, I see men, if you start steroids, testosterone boosters even, it's a spectrum, SARMs, PHs, if you do this, 
you'll probably feel great. It's insidious in the beginning, and you'll do that will lead to more and more and more use, to a greater trail, a greater spectrum, with or without PCT. And sooner or later, you will be living on testosterone for the rest of your life. You have to think about this. I want you to consider this. If that is something that you would say no way to right now, it's not going to be me. I don't want to be on testosterone with all the side effects, hair loss, puffiness, acne, bitch tits, gynecomastia, heart disease, prostate issues, testicular failure. If you don't want that, never, I implore you to listen to me, never start anabolic steroids. Don't do one pill. I really hope this helps. Thank you all so much for listening to this full presentation.